So you lovely lot, we're probably fishing one of my favourite ever styles of fishing and that is waggler fishing, traditional waggler fishing for carp on sort of pellets, you know, six mils, potentially eight mils, but six mils for the, obviously the time of year. It's just something that, yes, you can have like catch loads and loads of fish, but it, it's, it's one of them methods that will catch a sort of bonus fish whilst you're waiting for your pole lines to, you know, to come good later on in the session. But if you're anything like me and you love waggler fishing, you just end up staying on it all day and catching loads. It's just absolutely amazing. So we'll talk about obviously, you know, the, the, the setup. The, the main thing is, I suppose, the length of rod choice. It does make a difference. Obviously, when you're fishing for silvers like roach, eye chub, things like that, that's when the longer rod comes into play because of the line pickup. Obviously, fast bites, get into them nice and quick. When you're fishing for likes of carp and F1s that we are doing today, and you know, we're fishing sort of over depth fishing quite positive the bites are a little bit different you can afford to fish you know a 12 foot wagner rod it is perfectly acceptable what i would say is that oh it's full what have i done there it's just it's full down my eye uh, what i would say is you need to make sure that uh, your rod's forgiving you don't want sort of like a proper harsh carp waggler rod or you know like a beefed up pellet waggler rod or anything like that you want a nice through action rod something that when you're striking into them it's not going to rip the hook out you know on the strike so i'm using 12 foot parabolics awesome rods these are they just bend all the way through you know you can catch silverfish on them as well but for the likes of f1s and carp they're absolutely superb now the other thing to bear in mind is your reel choice i see a lot of anglers struggle and they're just using far too big reels you know um just i mean basically match it for for how I, for how far you're casting rather so a two and a half three thousand size reel at the absolute most you don't need four thousand five thousand size reels for this line as well the main line now i'm fishing a bit heavy waggler than what i would for you know traditional silvers um but i'm still using a real fine main line 0.16 Again, you know, it's winter fishing, or sort of very late autumn winter fishing. You don't need a thick main line. A nice thin main line, it's nice and smooth for your rod rings. Uh, you're not going to get in it where it's sticking through the eyes or anything like that. So 0.16 is probably about as heavy as I go. You don't need to go any heavier. Now we're on to the main bit itself, the, the rig. Now, float-wise, let's start off up here. I'm absolutely in love with these. Kev Leach floats, they're absolutely amazing. Uh, they come in sizes from 4BB up to, I think 7BB. Preloaded, uh, I pretty much don't ever use unloaded floats anymore. Uh, it's always loaded floats. And the beauty of these is you can take, take the bristles out. You know, you can obviously, if you're on white water, black bristle, you know, proper dark water, orange or your yellow bristles, they're superb. Now, setting it up, there's loads of different ways of this. This is probably my favorite i change all the time to be fair i have done in the past put the float straight on then put stops either side of it but certainly with these floats it, it's far easier having a having a connector on so you can change the float in an instant we've got a 6bb float on today and we're tucking roughly probably about 30 35 yards something like that and it's getting there perfect again with a with a light main line you're getting that distance perfect so all i've got either side of the float so i've got a, a waggler attachment on first and then i've got a rubber, one rubber above it, one rubber below it. So a little bit different to, you know, when you're sort of pellet waggler fishing, you'll have one above and maybe two or three below because that's where the force is when you're going to cast the float. There's not really much force going into these floats, obviously because they're so light. What I have got, you'll see, is a string of number eights. I've got a few below it and then obviously one above it. And that is just to bring that float down into play. I have got dropper shots, which we'll go into in a sec, but more often than not it's just it's just a case i don't want to put that harsh non-toxic shot on my line that's why i've got a string of uh, number eight and stots as well not shots it's very important that you're using stots when potentially you want to you know obviously go over depth moving the shots up and down your line now the other thing that you can do with these shots as well um you're right there rich <laughs> nearly went in uh potentially if you've got if you've got like a, a massive undertow or you know the wind has suddenly got up what I can do with these number eights is bring them down and put them into my bulk. So I'm basically fishing like a little bulk. Uh, I have been known to do that. It can work uh, exceptionally well. Waffling a bit though now, aren't we? So we'll come down the rig. So that's our float, fixed at like three foot. Now coming down the rig, we've got a single number 10 stop. Again, stops over shots every day of the week when I know I've got to be moving them. So for change depth or what have you, I'll be moving that as well. Another number 10 stop. 
and then we've got a nice long hook length 12 inch hook length which is it's one of jesus because they don't have any tied up it's a 0.15 and we've got a 16s kkm uh, with a little band on it and onto that obviously you know choice of hook baits we've got got robin red six mils we've got f1 sweet six mils and i've just got normal copying six mils um don't ever let that put you off fishing heavier i mean obviously fishing for f1s and, and potentially skimmers or you know smaller fish with a waggler the, the way it presents itself it's so much more versatile and more natural than than what you would get with a pole so it just comes in a lot more natural and obviously we're going to be i, I reckon we're, we're a good sort of 12 inches over depth over there uh, when you see the flow you see it go down slow but then there's no mistake in the proper bite just get a nice fast dink off it so main things with it is just i mean it's perseverance with the waggler uh, but making sure it, it's it's landing right as well obviously in open water you you want to do the feathering yourself so watch that float through the air just before it hits the water completely stop the line so your baits get introjected past your float when you're fishing up to an island it's very important that you before you put the hook length on that's when you have your practice casts and then you want to be stopping it well obviously depending on how deep you're fishing I'm fishing, as I say, I fixed at three foot, so I've stopped it sort of like four foot away, and that'll allow for the extra line with my hook length on, so I'm not going squirreling every time like Jay does when he casts in. Uh, yeah, it's it, honestly, folks, you've got to give it a go. It's one of the best ways of sort of like winter fishing or just fishing in general. It's just you can't beat it. Get on the waggler, folks, and give it a go for yourselves.